Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Before we begin I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him this series literally wouldn't be possible. Now if you are looking to grab Maroc, I've pre-ordered mine from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have included the link to their site in the description below along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new figure preview video goes live on the channel. Now, I was expecting a lot of stuff from the Ahsoka line. Maybe a Shin, maybe a Balin. Maroc wasn't really up there, and I'm also not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He was just the other Inquisitor. He didn't last very long, and he turned into, like, gas or something? I remember when the show first came out, people were speculating that this guy had some kind of star killer connection from the Force Unleashed games. But unless, again, I miss something in the show, I don't really think that's a thing. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, though. He does come with a couple of hands, different gestures. I really like the texture on the leather for the hands. There's also some armor plating on the back, and you'll notice this a little bit more when we pan up to the figure himself. He is very rusty looking. But that's the look from the show. He looks exactly like he's supposed to. You also have an interchangeable gauntlet with the little screen, and you can see there's a decent level of metal texture on the surface, that sort of undulating, rough looking finish and a little bit more of that rust work. He actually comes with no fewer than four lightsaber hilts in total, two of which are USB powered. Now, unfortunately, thanks to the Grand Inquisitor, we did find out that this is just Hot Toys usual LED lightsaber tech. They've only just converted the power source to USB rather than button cell batteries. So the effect is pretty rubbish. I am hoping that one of the customizers out there, like Fusion Reactors for example, with their sick LED powered lightsabers, gets their hands on this figure, does something with the hilts, and converts them to a proper light up lightsaber blade that actually looks like it's supposed to. Not the sorta of okay passable in pitch black looking lightsabers that Hot Toys gives us. So for me right now, I'm going to skip the cable dangling around going through the armor and just hanging off the back of him. I'm going to go with the non-LED lightsabers. Like I said, you get four different hilts in total and four different lightsaber blades. You've got the straight ones and the swooshing versions. I would like if they made the blades a little bit more red though. They are still leaning more towards pink rather than a proper fiery red. With all of that being said, the detail on the hilts? Outstanding. You've got the rust, you've got the dirt and grime, and you've got some very sharp sculpt work for as small as these things are. Plus the emitter ends are asymmetrical, they're flipped from left to right. And you can store the hilt on his back just like all of the other Inquisitors. Now this display base, not gonna lie, is pretty boring. I would have liked to have seen something just a little bit more exciting. Even just throw in one of those little pieces that you can slap on the front, just like we saw with the DX version of Ahsoka, the water effect, just to spruce it up a little because this is just a plain black piece of plastic for the display base. Either way, it will get the job done. Now he does have a split cut boot design, which gets me very excited. And he also reads kind of like a medieval knight, which I think is what the costume designers were going for. He's got the outfit underneath as the substructure, then over the top all of this armor plating, which does actually convincingly read as though it's metal. It isn't, it's all plastic, it's just some very clever sculpt work and paint work. It's got this texture to it, which we've discussed earlier with the gauntlet, and then it's got this subtle silver dry brushing just on the edges, you can see it right there on that knee pad. And over the top of that, washers, airbrush shading, and the rust effect. It's this very fiery orange, which does help it stand out against the overall very gunmetal suit of armor. This outfit, this figure in fact, could have looked very boring. But I reckon he's got a couple of things going for him that will almost mitigate that issue. The fabric outfit 
is going to be great for posing. I reckon this guy's going to be a posing king. And he's got the double-bladed LED-powered swooshing effect lightsaber. So those two things combined, you'll be able to do some sick looking poses. I reckon that's going to make this guy look way more exciting on the shelf. If this was a figure that you had to put in a museum pose and he was already a second tier character with a relatively simple suit of armor, then I don't think this guy would have had as much going for him as he actually does. Now the chest plate does look very classic Star Wars with the buttons and the greeblies and little bits and pieces on the front. Everything else does once again read more medieval knight than anything else, at least to me personally. I do also like that the rust effect is almost being dragged down from the crevices, as though water has collected in those spots and then it's run down just a little, which is a very natural looking weathering effect. And it is two pieces of armor for the upper torso, a lower and an upper, so when you go to ab crunch, you will have that range of motion. Once again, this guy's going to be really solid for posing. I'm also noticing that there's a T on his chest. I don't know that that was intentional or not. Please let me know in the comments below. I am liking that they have transferred some of that orange paint onto his black undersuit. It doesn't make a ton of sense until you think about it. I mean, when you touch rusty metal, if you wipe it with a cloth or something, some of that rust will rub off onto the fabric. So I'm glad that finally they're weathering the fabric outfits as well as the armor. I've said it time and time again with the Mandos, their outfits are completely pristine underneath the armor, and it just doesn't make a ton of sense. The juxtaposition of a super clean outfit underneath dirty, grimy, nasty looking armor, just not my vibe. I prefer a much more cohesive look, which I think is what Hot Toys were trying to do with this guy. You can even see underneath that shoulder pad there, a little bit of that rustiness just transferring onto the outfit. It's not too much, it's not overdone, it's just some visual interest to make this guy, like I said, look more cohesive. And you've got some ribbed stitching on the outfit, so it's not just a black, plain piece of fabric. You can see that that rib stitching is around his elbow area, whereas the gauntlet piece does come up pretty high, so I am curious to see how this guy goes for articulation. I'm still loving the texture and the matte finish to the gloves, though. It does actually convincingly look like a fabric glove, whereas we know it's all fully sculpted plastic. I don't mean to keep going on and on about the hands, it's just that these are some of the best hands I've seen from Hot Toys in a while. The gestures are natural, the placement of the fingers, and there's even some wrinkling. Now, I'm not exactly sure where you're supposed to run the USB-C cable to, because there isn't a massive gap between the gauntlet and his body underneath. So in an ideal world, you just thread it through the gauntlet, then have it run under his outfit or maybe through his sleeve, perhaps. It is going to be a challenge with these USB powered lightsabers, finding out where exactly you're supposed to run the cable every time. I think that Hot Toys could have potentially done something else. Like, for example, my ideal light up lightsaber solution. I would like for the upper torso, which is a separate piece articulated on a ball joint, so it doesn't need to have any wires running through to the legs, to have a AA or AAA battery inside and that be the power source. Then you can run the cable through the arm, still maintaining articulation because we've seen them do that with Iron Man figures and Captain Marvel with her light up wrist pegs, and then have the hand be magnetic. Have the lightsaber already attached to the hand. So when you go ahead and plug the hand onto the magnetic wrist peg, Power is transferred through the magnet, and the lightsaber lights up. Magic. No cables, no USBs, and you can have the lightsaber blades be actually bright and punchy. Whereas this solution kind of feels like they're midway through the journey of finding a way of properly doing an LED light-up lightsaber in 6 scale. Don't quite think this is the final solution, fingers crossed at least, because I don't love the current slate of LED powered lightsabers the way they look, or the way they function with cables dangling everywhere. Neat idea, just not quite executed perfectly. His cape on the other hand is executed perfectly. It's this rough, tattered, nasty looking fabric, and there's some dirt and grime along the edges. Hot toys though? They had to sneak in some pleather, just a little, right there underneath his neck. You can see it, right? That piece of pleather tucked into the top of the armor. 
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why they always have to include a little bit of pleather, but there it is. Now, the head sculpt or the helmet it looks pretty good. The shape is overall accurate to me. I'm just not quite sure about the eye slits running down the front. Why are they not painted in black to give the illusion that there's actually some depth there? They're just gunmetal. You do have that texture on the surface. I don't think that's enough to convey that a dude could actually look through this helmet. Then again, he's not really a dude, is he? He's kind of like that gas or something. Still, I would have liked to have seen some black paint in the crevices. Not impossible to do yourself. I would rather not have to, though. Maybe that's something they'll change for the final version. Right now, I like the shape, I like the paint applications, and I love the texture. It's a very cohesive look from top to bottom. There's dirt transferring onto the cape, onto the outfit underneath the armor, and then the armor itself just looks absolutely disgusting. Even though this guy isn't one of the main characters that I was hoping for from the show, I'm still kind of glad that we have him, some kind of villain to go alongside Grand Admiral Thrawn and the Grand Inquisitor in your Star Wars display. I am hoping we get Shin and Balin though. Fingers crossed, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, I've pre-ordered my copy of this dude from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research. Make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.